but I left school at 16, but I, and I was looking to where I could find any job connected with the arts, and I got a job working for uh, a print and design company uh, on the on the strength of a portfolio with lots of little drawings in I did. Um, basically, I was a dog's body there for years, cleaning print machines and delivering leaflets, and but also learned a bit about how the processes of designed to, to print worked and eventually I started to get work in the studio and started designing things and um, you know found out a bit about well found out more and more about how the um, print and rep row industry works really and advertising which I learned to really hate um, and then in my 20s when I realized I hated, hated advertising so much I had to get out of it I just decided to pack it in and pursue life as a um, as an artist in my own right, really doing my own thing, really. Um, which at that time was um, I got involved with doing a series of screen prints, um, a, a process with a in a place called Spectre Arts Workshop, um, and I also had a young child at that point, so it was a bit irresponsible just packing my work at the time, but. When you're young, you just don't think about these things, do you? So you just um, get on with it. And uh, and at the time, someone suggested I should do some... I did these long, quite complicated uh, designs of ladies representing different, different flowers, which is based on arts and crafts kind of uh, stuff which influenced me at that time in Alphonse Moucher. Um, and they said, well, why don't you do screen prints of, of it? Which was really... The opposite of the way people were working with screen prints at that time, they were all doing like Andy Warholish sort of stuff, advertising kind of imagery, which is what I was trying to escape. So these my quite complex designs were broken down for the process of screen printing uh, into, into individual forms, which was there was a lot of delicate work in it, and it was it was quite a, a task. To, to do it. I worked with a guy called Stuart Craig who was very skilled and enthusiastic about trying to reproduce my work as I probably would never have done it. But I learned quite a lot from it and I ended up producing these series of four um, screen prints. I was always interested in studying from nature and developing my ideas in a decorative form which is something which a lot of my heroes like William Morris did and a lot of the arts and craft people did. And I always enjoyed studying the details of nature and still do. That the drawing is my primary joy is my primary joy, really. Um, and taking that forward to some sort of other form of finished art is, is the process that I like going through to develop my work. Well, very very early art where the way Egyptian art, Phoenician art, the way people used to depict nature very graphically. Even in those early days, when there were high, when there were kind of low relief carvings, you know, you'd see that these people understood exactly what the animal looked like, but chose to to render it decoratively, you know. Um, but even if you go even further back and you look at cave paintings and you see the awareness that the early man had of the natural world around them, they're still highly stylized things, but you knew exactly what the animals were like. So uh, rather than just studying thing and trying to replicate it exactly as it is which i do when i'm studying just to understand uh, the subject i like to kind of um, develop it into some sort of decorative interpretation of of uh, whatever the sub subject was really i like to have a narrative in the imagery so it's like a, one picture has a tells a sort of story in itself without without uh, words if you can help it if, if you can get a lot from that a lot of the story from that picture without the aid of words uh, that's my primary objective but then I like to add a narrative to it as well um, just if because I like writing as well as so um, it can be people it can be just observing people it can be observing nature and it's and it's various shapes and forms I mean as an artist I suppose you draw from everything but you um 
you know, my main choice is interpreting the natural world, but I love storytelling as well. This is why I'm, I like, I've always been, been moved by the powerful imagery I get from reading books, particularly fantasy books, or mytho mythology. I like the way that uh, images fill your head up and I, I feel like I have to try and interpret them. Well, book, in, book illustration is something I, and book design is something I guess has always been with me again, wanting to produce books and, and allow me to interpret as, um, an image in, in a, a whole variety of ways um, is why I think it's good to have all those images between two covers, you know, rather than um, in, pan, in, in prints and paintings on walls. It gives me, every time I think of an idea, I get lots of ways of looking at it and in a book I can interpret it that way. I mean, that's why I evolved these books I've been working on lately called life cycle books, which means I choose a, an animal of my choice. The first one I chose was puffins because everyone said, why don't you do a book about puffins? And then I looked at them and I thought, well, yeah, there's a lot of graphic kind of potential in puffins. Um, and I had a myriad of ideas about it and um, chose some of the best ones to tell, to interpret the life cycle uh, of a puffin. Um, then I decided to do in the same series, which I'm calling life cycle books, I uh, decided to work on the swallows um, life cycle. That involved a lot of studying about looking at lots of other authors' works about and research about the animal and uh, trying to kind of compact all the information into a concise interpretation to go with me images. So I love the learning process and I love reading about habitats and um, and about recent scientific kind of discoveries about um, animals' lives and uh, try and bring it up to date, to try and bring it up to date and then try and interpret it in the imagery. So, you know, uh, it tells a story um, in a very graphic and bold way. I think as you get older, you, you realise that um, the time is getting shorter and, and the reality of the fact that you've got hundreds of projects going on and the reality of actually finished them all becomes too damn real and it it does undermine you a bit um, so it's a challenge keep um kind of cracking the whip for yourself and 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 get making yourself get on um, and, and get projects done because i don't have to do it for survival reasons anymore uh, i do it because i want to do it i don't have to keep myself locked in the studio away from the outside world day in and day out i could just be uh, out in my canoe or motorcycling around britain or walking with me wife maybe <laughs> all sorts of things I, I could possibly do but um but i'm still driven to wanting to always do something better than i did last time and and getting some of these ideas out of my head and making them a reality um that, that's important and uh, but i have realize that prioritizing things to get one project finished before I move on to another is uh, a good idea. So I guess that's it really. I'll never stop, I'll never retire um, in any shape or form because uh, I know that I'll always, as far as I can see and as far as I can hear and as far as my hands work, <laughs> I'll be um, trying to create, you know, because that's the satisfying thing about it all.